Well, it's been a while since I've ripped out the old Roger two of asses, but we're back in it. I've got a couple of uh, thumbnails still with with me with my glasses on. I just got over them. I didn't think they uh, helped at all. So we're giving them a crack today. Why not? Hey, and uh, we we made rank this week somehow. <laughs> That's for sure. Seven eighty eight. End up with a a few players in my team that that outperformed others. That's for sure, which is awesome. And uh, Trey Fuller being one of them at sixty one. Karaz with the fifty seven. Armstrong, very happy with his 42 there. Cotter's 57 was great. Jolliffe's 48, I suppose, was was solid enough without being spectacular. Atkinson, that trade-in really helped my week, to be honest with you. It kind of saved it after the the Hines, you know, being out into only having 16 into having Plath as vice-captain. It, uh, it really helped that 62, and, and he made good cash this week. So super happy with that. Blory's 45 was fine. Braley's 48 ended up being a really good score this week. And then Crichton, 78. Grant, 34. Not so good. Last 6, 37 was fine. Add the Kyphus Falls, 32. Bateman, 24. Not great. Galvin, 41. Sweet. Iroh, 30. Most people own him. Drinkwater's, 28. Trading him in this week was pretty disgusting. But uh, yeah, didn't have to cop Pikura's, 8. Uh, obviously, didn't play Hughes's, 30. Or Salmon's, 23, who picked up 3K in gains this week, which is pretty cool. Let's jump in and have a look at yeah where the, the money was made and lost this week with Joey Lussick down 7K, which is completely fine. To be honest, if we can keep him somewhere around that sort of 500K mark, I'll be completely happy with that and we'll work out what we're doing with him in round 13. Cotter with the 32K gain up to 738, been an awesome guy to start with. And yeah, one of the main sort of guys in my team that I've held and had since the start. I'll actually have a look at that. So Cotter is the only one in that top bunch right now. Plath didn't lose any money or gain this week, so that's fine. Uh, likely that we have him out next week. There is a, a tiny chance. Physio was saying that you know, he said that he was not fit to return, but it may have been because of the nose like being broken. That could be a chance. But So let's hope and pray that he's named tomorrow, but I doubt it at this point. And uh, I suppose yeah, it is what it is. Jolliffe with a 14K gain up to 719 with a 48. Again, it was just so side to side, which wasn't helpful. Kaipi's pulled down 21K, but yeah, that's fine. If, if Frizzell is actually out this week, there's some news that Gagai, Frizzell, and Bradman Best are in some doubt for Magic Round. And if that's the case, Kaipi's Paul would get back to some big minutes, which we really need right now. Bateman with the injury anywhere between two and six weeks. So hopefully it's on the minor side and I'll be able to keep him. But we'll see how that one plays out. 9K down. Heinz didn't play, of course, with a C on him. Galvin plus 15. Iroh plus 19. Karaz 18. Atkinson 62. Drinkwater down 36. That was a tough trade-in, as I said. Armstrong up 46 for 118 overall for those that grab, grabbed him game one. Grant down 27. Braley up 22. Angus Crichton another 96 in gains. The last three weeks have been insane. The last six weeks, anyway, since he got back into that starting side. Glory up four. He's kind of peaked now. Husey 25, which is great. Uh, Pico down 15. <laughs> How good is he? Trey Fuller up 53. Jamin Salmon up 3K there, which was really, really cool. And then some of the top guys, Fafita up to 901K. Incredible last month from him. Adafinor Blake 818, getting very expensive. Carrigan down a bit after his lower one. Obviously, Edwards there up 15 to 801K. Very, very impressive. Uh, Cleary get 860 to play with there. Manu down 11, helpful for us looking to potentially buy him soon. Eight can up a good a good stretch there at 26 as well. And uh, who else do we say? Johnson down 55, so that's a tough one there. In this week, gee, Hopgood would be a nice purchase, wouldn't he, if we thought he you know, might not make origin. But yes, yeah, probably likely at this point. Connor Watson's up to 740. He's gotten quickly up there. Dylan Brown up to 753. So again, someone that's very difficult to purchase this week, that's for sure. But... That leaves me with 16 trades now. I made that second trade, Ethan Strange to Atkinson. And it does leave me not short in the center, center department, but I don't have any cover right now uh, that I've yeah moved on from some of my dual position guys as well. Like in my wing fullback now, it's, uh, I'll go back to, sorry, round 10 before I've changed things. Fuller, Drinkwater, Armstrong, all singular wing fullback there. And then Atkinson has the half wing fullback dual. So, you know, that's going to be helpful. But that center position... Thank goodness that Karaz is fine. Hopefully that is still the case and, you know, he didn't just get through the game. And uh, But he did look free-flowing and looks like he'll be fine uh, after a really good, you know, try at the end there was good too. But Iroh and Karaz, if I can keep them over the next few weeks and potentially get some center cover, that'll be cool. 
just need Plath back for round 12 and 13. That would be nice. Please, 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 Maxi boy, be okay. Um, but yeah, the week, solid overall, 7, 4, 788, as I said. And looking at potential issues coming into next week, Bateman is one of them. Hopefully, Kaipis Paul can get some good minutes, and it was just a rest this week. They obviously won without him anyway, but they won the, the, ga- the two games before with him in that starting position. So maybe it's not an 80-minute performance going forward, but if he can get 60, that would be fine. And, and yeah, for, hopefully for his sake, that Frizzell's out just this week as a precaution, and he can get that good minutes there. But again, in that edge spot, guys, like who do you... You just can't make these types of trades this week, can you? Like guys that are scoring sort of 30-odd, 40-odd, as I said, if they're scoring a little bit under what they're providing, but there's a good chance that they could get some bigger minutes in the coming weeks. Like even the Terrell May trade out, like all it took was one injury or two, and that's exactly what happened for him. And, you know, he can get some decent enough minutes, like 50 in that first one and then 38 this week, where he can score well enough. You know, those guys that have that ability, even if the minutes aren't there, to score really well. And that's something that Kai Paul has. That's something that Terrell has. And yeah, they're, they're guys that you can easily hold because of that. And with the amount of injuries that happen week to week, and it's actually, as an overall injury situation, apparently it's very much the same as other years. Just these hamstrings that are really popping up in this season so far uh, that, that's overtaken all of the other injuries that you, you do see on a regular basis. But those types of guys, I think you have to hold. But uh, we really want Heinz to be back this week. That would be nice. Bateman, if he's out sort of that four to five, six weeks, then I think he's a sell. If you can, if we can find out some information that's very minor, which we think it's closer to the minor side. He wasn't in a sling either Saturday or Sunday, so that's good news, but it still could be like a couple of weeks and then they're buying round 13. And if that's the case, then I think he's a hold for that three weeks. If it's longer than that, I think it's too, too tough to hold at the price point considering you know, it could be anywhere up to that six-week range as well. So Bateman's the worry right now. Armstrong's got the the medical sign next to him, but guys, he should be sweet. They uh, said he passed his HIA, and Lara Pitt was interviewing him and said that you know see him magic round, awesome. He should be sweet. Uh, so happy with that. For me, Fuller's going to be out this week, as long with Max Plath. So you know, most likely Fuller's out. It could be bench, but uh, most likely Fuller, unless um, Hammer has a little bit of a setback in his. You know, they said he's going to be good to go, but if something you know perks up in that hamstring uh, he could be out this week but in terms of my interchange hopefully Crichton's fine yeah that's that Pikura like he's going to be playing but how good is he going to be scoring so for me it's, I'm not in a terrible position obviously without Cleary without SJ without potentially Brimson Turbo like I don't have a lot of trades this week to make I think at max is going to be two what I was looking at this week coming up was going to be Pikura to two um, weeks there, okay, weeks. So that still could be on the cards, and we'll see if Bateman's a, you know, he's going to be okay. Then maybe he's a hold. But again, next week is probably more my worry than this week. I don't have any dragons, but next week I've got three knights and that Braley, KPP, and obviously Armstrong there. And then if Fuller's out as well, that would be my my seventeen. And then that's where the guys like P. Kura could be a hold for that, um, yeah, for that round twelve, right? Just because he's a he's a, a player <laughs> that's actually on the park. Uh, and that's where Bateman might be a difficult hold for me because that would leave me short for round 12. But this week here, I'll be fine and hopefully can make some more ranks. So I've got the 788 into 20, uh, 2088 overall after being 2,600 last week. And you know, a few weeks ago, you know, 7,000, 15,000 and uh, 20,000 back in round at the end of round five. So a much better situation for me uh, here being 2088 leading into Magic Round. If I can get into sort of that 1,500 to 1300 range over the, over this week and the next few, I can be in a good position, but I still want to be trying to conserve trades as much as I can, one to two a week here, just to get through injuries. Next week might be more of my trade week in round 12, and then hopefully round 13, 14, and I can sort of do one or two max. But um, next week could be my troubler, if especially if there's further injuries, that could be the week that I, uh, I do struggle a little bit, and we may have to make a few trades a week early, just to get, uh, you know, instead of making the necessary adjustments in round 13 to get that strong 13 playing starting on the park, uh, I might have to do it a week early. So we'll see how that one plays out, but that's next week, round 12's problem. This week we've got team lists to, to have a, a think about and and guys like Salmon and Hughes that are warm bodies, like Hughes definitely a hold. Salmon, 
obviously has peaked, but you know, scoring wise, are you excited to play him week in, week out? Does he go back to the middle with Preston, hopefully getting some more minutes again? We will see. And uh, yeah, they like obviously coach seems to be pretty happy with his output. And you know, they're they're getting close to winning games. They are winning some in there as well. So I doubt that uh, you know the team will change too much. Like does does Salmon get the the Bailey Hayward minutes potentially? Uh, he did get bigger minutes on the weekend, but you know maybe that was more the the case of he's the the, the one likely to to be out of this side next week in, and back to reserve. So that's the interesting interesting thoughts on the side. I uh, think as I said, in a in a better position this week then I think we will be coming into to round 12. But yeah, super excited to get the magic round. I'm just going to keep saying every video, reach out if you're uh, if you're going to be around. I'll um I'll let people know in my videos. I'll be doing videos throughout the weekend as well, guys. The laptop will be up there. Uh, won't won't be taking the mic, so it won't be as uh, pretty sound, but I'll um I'll be getting those videos done as always for you legends. So that's my team. Let's have a quick look at the rankings. So myself there, 8-1-34. So Josh moves into first with an 887. So unfortunately pushes us a little bit further away from from that great position and squad value didn't rise too much we're still at 12.7 which is a little bit behind now these guys in sort of the top 20 and so who are closer to the 13 mil mark and, and the leader now josh is at 13.3 so let's have a quick look at him now in that spot looks really strong there obviously you know brown he had a turbo as vice there for 44 nothing crazy had garrix 26 but walker Tedesco, Madison ended up at 44. What happened there? What? Where did he get his update? He was at 36, wasn't he? I haven't even heard anyone mention that with Maddo, that he got pushed up to 44. Okay. Let me know in the comments when that happened. Did that happen this morning? Did that happen last night? I, I don't know. Because he was at 36, wasn't he? There you go. Anyway, good score there. He didn't even play Kaipi's Paul, and he's got Smithies on the bench as well. So this is a team with a tremendous value. It's only really Chevy Stewart, the only guy that's not making cash for him. So good stuff, Josh. I uh, hope you continue to do well. And uh, you've built a little lead now. The sort of top three have, have pushed away a little bit. 8603, 8578, 8561 into fourth at 8545. So yeah, leader has 100 points on, almost 100 points on eight, uh, ninth. Yeah, 98 points on, on ninth there. So really, really good situation there. On that front, let's go to my leagues there and uh, see where we're at. Obviously, overall side first. Let's go to the Battle of Podcast. Yeah, stick in third position here. Austin and Daniel had really good weeks there. He had Crichton as VC. Did Austin and same with Daniel. So both of those guys end up in a great a great situation there with, with Hines going down. It helped them get 870 and 850. 788 for myself. Lucy in there with a 746. Adrian an 811. So... Nothing crazy across the board on that front. Again, I don't know a lot of these guys. Stuart from Amateurs, or Boom and Bust Amateurs, 770 for him. Mark there with a 776. Chris is 729. So yeah, a few guys like, you know, solid enough to make some ranks there for Mark. 3,000 or so with Atkinson and had uh, Bateman as vice, so even worse than, than my one, unfortunately. Uh, in that front, Eddie's having a unfortunately a really tough year after being a, just a, a yearly top 100 guy. So even the, the some of the best coaches in fantasy are having tough seasons right now. And then Scoop made a couple of ranks there with 768, just under my score. So that means he'll, yeah, definitely would have went up sort of three or 4,000, which is good. But he had the um, he had the vice on Turbo, so nothing spectacular there. But Cleary, Hines, Turbo, Bateman, yeah, he's in it. And Plath this week, he's in a spot of bother having Chester as well. So another week of uh, plenty of trades. He had Tulungi, thank goodness there. We'll um, hopefully speak to Scoop this week and get his perspective on um, on where things are at and, and where to go from here because it's uh, a, a lot of people are in his situation there. He had Woodell with 51, so that was very helpful too. But uh, yeah, so a lot of people in his situation with uh, plenty of injuries this week. So it could be a big trade week and uh, yeah, just trying to get things right as quickly as possible. Each beat me again. Uh, it seemed to, every time it comes around to to playing each other again, she she got the win, but no Hines for her. That's where it helped, but um, brought in brought in Cleary this week and captained him. So tough on, on that front, but a few good players there with like Talangi and uh, Atkinson really, really helped her in that one. Got a few, got wins across the board outside of that. So yeah, what I niche kill me on that one. There you go. Private group. Shout out to those guys. Ash into a yeah good position there. 109th with a 785. Mitch dropped down a little bit with 756. Uh, Shane, Don, into uh, third and fourth there, 790 for Shane, 795 for Don. 
And then Liam there dropped back a little bit. 7.23, unfortunately, there. Kim, Hamish, Les, Bevan, and Jacob in that top 10. Good stuff uh, in that one. So there you go. That's the private crew. Let's go to the NRL Fantasy Analysis community where Nathan is up top in the what position? Eighth overall. So congrats, Nath. You got Joseph in at 10th, which is awesome. Anthony in the top three there uh, to make 31st. Bailey and Matt G in the top four and five. 38th overall for our fifth place uh, guy there. So congrats and a little visual uh, shout out to, to all you guys there, which is really, really cool. So yeah, I think that's enough on my team. Let's have a quick look at the head to head team. I haven't even looked at it myself this morning, but uh, I don't imagine it was uh, incredibly pretty, but having no Heinz, you know, maybe worked out a little bit uh, better for me. We'll see how we go. Okay, so it was a 769 for the head to head squad. Traded Brandon Smith for Havili in the end for a secondary trade. Tall Harris is 38, is pretty gross. Did he go back down as well? I'm not sure. Anywho, uh, yeah, 36 for Havili in his 40 minutes. He does make a tiny bit of cash, I believe. But uh, Cotter 57 was good. Plath and Harris, not so much. Cleary is captain, a bit gross. But um, Dylan Brown, 77, was a, a big win. Training in Nicaragua this week for a 50 was good. Armstrong's decent score. Trebojevic, 44. Garrick, not so good. Drinkwater's 28. I've had him for a long time now. But Bloor and Galvin, solid. Obviously played Piakura there. And then looped in Blaze Salangi's 57. So that's a win there with uh, having Blaze in the squad for that 57. He could be an option for my overall team as well. Uh, but, you know, just probably the amount of games he's going to get could be a little bit annoying if it's just sort of three they're in that fullback slot, but you know if he's doing well, maybe he keeps it. That's probably the, the only kind of thought and uh, a tougher opponent this week against Melbourne as well for him and Dylan Brown. But in terms of my amount of trades, I'm down to 16 as well, 130 in the bank. And we'll uh, we'll check out our, actually let's check out where we, how we went this week in our leagues before we make some, some thoughts around the squad. So Copton 933, the Parramatta tax. Oh my goodness, Matty Bailey. That's an incredible score at 933. Let's have a look at the squad. Captain Dana for Noah Blake. Had Isaiah Papali'i. Nice. Isaiah Yo and Corey Waddell. Even had Grant, Kaipis Paul, Johnson. But had Dylan Brown, Blaise Talungi, Karaz, Wishart. That was an incredible, um, yeah, incredible guy to have this week. And he, he might be a, a sneaky, a sneaky buy that's going to play a bunch of these games with, with Munster being out as well as Hughes. He, uh, he seems to score really well in that half position. He's got Dylan Edwards as well. Atkinson, Braley, Galvin there. All good stuff on that front. Obviously doesn't own Cleary or Hines, does he? No. There you go. That's why I got pumped in that. <laughs> I was no chance this week as soon as uh, any, <laughs> anything near where um, Hines went down. Uh, we had Cam did beat me in that one. That's tough. Got beaten that one. Won the Serato sucks. Come on, man. He's doing better. Um yeah, so didn't win many. Got a few of these wins out. Second, third, sixth, seventh, fifteenth, third, seventh, tenth, ninth, fifth. All right. Yeah, a couple of close ones, sadly. A few wins, a few close losses there in the, in the back end. So, okay, cool. So we're good in a few ways on the fringe in others. So yeah, that's um, going to dictate you know how I'm making trades on a week to week basis. In terms of issues in this squad, Cleary is out. Turbo is out. So there's two trades minimum. And then it could potentially be a, I do have to bring in KO Weeks, but it could be like two expensive guys for Cleary and Turbo and then using a third trade on Joe Chan or, yeah, probably is Joe Chan before Piakura, to be fair, in this scenario. We want as many, you know, playing players, making some cash and, and helping us win as much as possible. In terms of my Knights players, I do just have Armstrong and Kaipis Paul. No Braley, so that helps for next week. But, you know, Chan, is he going to be out next week? Do we want Piakura's score? There's, you know, a few things to think of. Obviously, I think for anyone with a couple of Knights players next week, you know, there's going to be a few trades over the next bunch of weeks. But, yeah, Havili, thank God he got through that game okay. And uh, he can be my hooker for the next few weeks, that's for sure. And, yeah, round 13, I'm not too stressed about the hooking position, to be honest. Bit of a wasteland at the moment. And, uh, you know, Grant and Robson, the two best guys, uh, both scoring pretty poorly with a 43 for Robson and a 34 for Grant. Didn't even get the 35 that they had on NRL.com. Rough, rough, rough. But, uh, yeah, good to still have Strange in the squad. Use that cover for the center position. We've got Iro, Talangi, Strange, Garrick, Armstrong, Turbo. So I could move Garrick down to wing fullback if I wanted to and then just plug Talangi or, you know, Iro in that, have the looper 
player on the interchange, whatever we decide on that. And I could bring in someone in a different position, potential uh, as an option in that. Could bring in the hooker if I wanted to. Um, someone in the mids could be cool with Harris kind of down in the dumps a little bit. Uh, but we'll, we'll work that out. That's uh, yeah. The teams, as I thought, this week would be a better week. Obviously, you know, Hines not playing really helped. Considering Cleary got injured and he only picked up a 39, that helped this squad. And and hopefully over the next few weeks, we can get a few more wins in the head-to-head comp and uh, yeah, move us in the, in the correct direction, that's for sure. So that's the head-to-head spot right now. We'll leave it at that for the results this week. Let's uh, hear about all these injuries. Let's get some news in TLT. And uh, thanks for enjoying Mr. Clark Kent, Roger Tuivasa. Roger Tuivasa's my glasses for anyone that wasn't sure on, on that joke. Um why they are the Rogers. But anyway, thanks for being here and we'll catch you in the next few videos, guys.